South African TikTok content creator Matthew Lani has been the talk of the nation following allegations that he impersonated a medical doctor. Now, last week, charges of impersonating a doctor against him uh, were rescinded by the Johannesburg uh, Magistrate Court on account of insufficient evidence. But uh, what does this mean, uh, both in the legal framework and the medical fraternity? Well, let's uh, find out. Bahai Tsu, good evening. My name is Tabo Molokwane. Welcome to this edition of SOWET Today. Tonight we talk, uh, you know, we take a look at the story of the so-called um, uh, Dr. Matthew Lani, including the overall uh, legalities surrounding it, where the matter is currently at, and what the implications of incidences like these are on the medical fraternity at large. Now, to kick off the conversation, let's uh, bring in Hajan Professor at the uh, Vets Law Clinic, Professor Stephen Tucson, uh, who's joining us uh, this evening just to give us a legal perspective in this matter. Prof, thanks very much for taking the time. Uh, good evening. Welcome to the show. Good evening. <clears throat> Yes, uh, Prof, uh, I mean, you know, there's been quite a lot of uh, issues, particularly, uh, you know, with this case as far as it's concerned. Uh, Lani made headlines, uh, you know, uh, as impersonating, uh, uh, a, 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 you know, a doctor there. But maybe let's begin from the beginning. What does the law say uh, when it comes to this, uh, you know, impersonating, okay. yeah, impersonating a medical doctor? Maybe let's start uh, from oh. the basics then. Okay. Before I answer that, I just need to correct one thing. The NPA, the prosecution, didn't rescind the charges. They withdrew the charges. And the state can add, add charges or bring charges against the suspect, and they can withdraw them at any time and reinstate them at any time, provided the trial hasn't begun. And the beginning of a trial is when the accused pleads guilty or not guilty. The moment the accused pleads, the state cannot withdraw the charges without there being an acquittal. So it was, in my view, a wise or prudent decision of the prosecution to withdraw the charges at this stage because I think they need to get their ducks in a row and they need to get good evidence to sustain the charges. And there's a lot of, a lot of hot air here and it's a lot of TikTok nonsense that's going on. And we need to unpack whether what he did on TikTok constitutes a criminal offence. Hmm. Right, so to answer your question, this is sections 39 and 40 of the Health Professions Act, and I've just summarized it for you. It says, no person shall perform any act of a doctor unless registered. So he's clearly not registered. And I would argue that act of a doctor would be to treat somebody or examine somebody, prescribe medicine or, or give medical advice. So if he's done any of those things, then he would have uh, contravened the act because he's not registered and he's done these acts of a doctor. So I, I haven't really watched his videos. I don't know whether he treated anybody or examined any patients. He, I understand he's been selling some snake oil pills or something uh, and he has been giving advice. Now, you know, my auntie gives advice. Uh, she says, oh, when you treat flu, you must have a or toddy or something. Hmm. I don't think she's committed an offence. So I just think that's why it's wise for the prosecution to be prudent, tread carefully, marshal the facts and then see if it qualifies as an offence. But section 40 is a little bit more troublesome for him. It says if he's not registered and he pretends to be registered by using a name or a title. So if he says I'm a physio or I'm an orthopedic surgeon, or I'm a doctor. There he's using a name which he's not entitled to, okay? Or a symbol. Now, he wears a white coat, he wears a stethoscope. He's not a physio, he's not a nurse, he's not a doctor. He can't legitimately, in my view, uh, these, these could be seen to be an, uh, using a title or a symbol to show. And the, 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 what the section says, it leads people to believe he has a doctor's qualification when he does not. Mm. And I think he may run into trouble there. Again, the, you need to know, ask that he treat or examine somebody, prescribe medicine or give medical advice. So, so, so the, um, hmm. yeah. Yeah, but Prof, you know, I'm, I'm just asking myself because I'm, I'm, I'm listening to what you're saying and then also just looking at what the NPA said, particularly saying that uh, lying is not a criminal offence, but lying under oath is a criminal offence. Somehow that's a bit confusing. Mm. 
Okay, so that's uh, another uh, an offence. So we're talking here about statutory offences in terms of the Health Professions Act, pretending you're a doctor or, or, or using a title of a doctor when you're not. What you're talking about there is perjury, and perjury is usually defined as the making of two conflicting sworn statements. So if I swear under oath that this and this is true, and then I swear under oath another time that its exact opposite is true, then I've committed perjury. It's not clear whether simply lying constitutes perjury. It will depend on the context. So if I'm caught out in a flat lie that I'm a rocket scientist <laughs> and I'm not, is that perjury? I think it would depend on the context and the, the, the forum that you're in, whether you would be guilty of, of perjury. Mm -hmm. So that's that there. So yeah, um, I think my, my overall assessment of the situation, I think the NPA has been prudent. I think they need to work out, did he treat somebody? Did he pretend to someone with, which led people to believe that he is a doctor when he is not? And, I, you know, they, they, he may well have overstepped that line. There's also a common law offence. Common law is a, not a statute passed by Parliament. It's just the, the law as old as, as our law, which is uh, fraud. He may well have committed fraud. And that would need to be considered. There's another one. He apparently stole somebody's identity. Mm. And that is grossly, you know, hurtful to somebody's dignity and their reputation and their name. And there's a common law crime called crimen in urea, where you impair the dignity of somebody. Normally, you, f you swear at them. You tell them, you, s you flip them. That would be crimen in urea. Um, Prof, I want us to take a quick ad break. When we come back, I want to just uh, delve deep into, uh, you know, this case in its entirety. Also looking at, uh, you know, you know, things that are being purported on the media, and also what you need to do as an individual. Uh, how dangerous is it, it is to the general public? I want us to just touch on that when we come back after the ad break. Do stay with us. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Before the ad break, we got an understanding of what the law states about impersonating a medical doctor and how you go about making a case. Now, still joining us via Zoom is Vets Law Clinic's Arjun Professor, that's Stephen Tucson, uh, to help us uh, further understand the story. He's still joining us uh, via Zoom. Uh, Prof, thanks very much for staying on. I mean, uh, now we're hearing that uh, there is uh, a perjury case by uh, a, a, you know, a certain lady uh, from the Northwest province, uh, Homolimo Seleka, uh, there. Um, you know, I want to understand there was also uh, another, uh, you know, uh, charge that was brought forward or a complaint that was brought forward by an intern from Tembisa Hospital. W what happens now? Because we know that uh, uh, the other case, uh, you know, um, the docket has been sent back to the Hawks for further investigation. This too, does it really? bring up uh, a solid case for the state. So I'm not exactly sure what informs the charge of perjury. From my readings, uh, briefly, quickly, some newspaper reports, it seems as though the young lady uh, found him out some time ago and brought it to the attention of the public that he is not a doctor and he's, he's, he's lying about this. And she's taking a very simplistic definition of perjury as simply telling a lie, a mistruth. And as I said to you, it's not clear. Normally, perjury is the making of two conflicting sworn statements. But here she's relying on the fact that he, he said, I'm a doctor when he's not. Uh, uh, and as I said, a lie can be perjury depending on the context and the forum that you're in. Mm. With regard to your second question and the, um, the, the, the stolen identity, the, the young intern doctor whose name yeah. he's stolen, as I said to you, there's a, crimin, there's a common law offence called crimen inuria, where you injure the dignity and, and reputation and feelings of an individual. And to, to steal his name and then make an idiot of yourself on TikTok, pretending to be someone else's name, would be, I think, deeply embarrassing and uh, hurtful to the individual whose name they've stolen. And so there could be a common law offence there of criminal urea. Mm. Um, yeah. 
plus the statutory offences of... of uh, yes, Prof. Uh, so so um, uh, I think you're, uh, we, we're struggling to uh, hear you there. Uh, there's a connectivity you, issue. But uh, Prof, I want to understand with where the story is you're now, first there for a minute. what <laughs> legal avenues are still available for this case as far as Methulani is concerned? Or is it the end legally uh, where Methulani is concerned? Can more charges, I mean, we did speak about criminal injuria and also uh, perjury charges uh, there. But, uh, you know, a lot of analysts are, you know, grasping at straws, particularly looking at how this has unfolded in the last uh, few weeks. Is it, you know, still solid or are, are we likely to see this case being closed? Right, so... It relates to an earlier question you asked and we never got to answer it. Mm -hmm. What is the purpose of the Health Professions Act? And its clear aim is to protect the public from people who aren't doctors who try and do surgery and things that are, are could really endanger the health and lives of people if an unqualified person attempts it, which is why it, it criminalizes the, the doing of any act, treating, examining, prescribing, advising. And is there to protect. So you've got to ask yourself, to answer your question, is this case solid? Did he in any time put the public in danger? Now, if I go to a fancy dress party dressed in a white coat with a stethoscope and I tell everybody I'm a doctor, I'm strictly speaking in the letter of those words breaking the law because I'm, I'm not registered and I'm not a doctor. But nobody would think twice of prosecuting me because the context is a fancy dress party. Now, his argument is, I'm an entertainer, and I was doing this for laughs. Um, you could never take me seriously, honestly, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think he overstepped the line. I really do. He stole someone else's name who is a doctor, which shows that he tried to, he had some kind of malicious intent. And I, I don't know what the facts are with regard to whether he treated, examined, prescribed or advised people medically, and it seems to them he may have done that. But the background to this whole thing is the act is there to protect the public, and did he place the public in danger by what he did? Mm. Um, Prof, before we go for an ad break, I mean, when it comes to the law and social media, I want to understand what would be, you know, the intricacies involved in a way that uh, the law comes in where social media is concerned in the country, especially given a lot uh, that, uh, you know, these social media apps are not created here. So regulations uh, seems to be a bit uh, of a challenge somewhere, somehow, to what mm -hmm. people can post on social media. Mm. Look, it was published here and it was viewed here and heard here and seen here. So I, I would have absolutely no difficulty with a prosecution notwithstanding the fact that it's a platform which is overseas and so on. Um, it may be a little bit difficult to to get the cooperation of the overseas platform tech techies to uh, authenticate the material. Um, like Oscar Pistorius wasn't able to open his Apple phone, his Apple iPhone, because they couldn't get the cooperation of Apple. That kind of practical problem. But uh, I, I have no doubt that they will be able to easily prove that it was published and view, viewed in South Africa and therefore the offence was, was committed, uh, if there is indeed offence. Yeah, but we have to ask, did he treat, examine, prescribe or advise anybody? Uh, and, and did he mislead people to believe that he was a doctor when he clearly wasn't? Did Prof he put the public in danger? Mm -hmm. Prof, I want us to take a quick ad break. When we come back, uh, I want us to uh, wrap up the conversation looking at uh, what happens from now on uh, from the legal perspective and also what the medical associations also can do to make sure that they safeguard the public, particularly looking at uh, incidences uh, such as this. We're going to take a quick ad break. We're coming back with more after this. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We are about to wrap up uh, the conversation with Arjun Professor from the Vet Law Clinic. That's uh, Professor Stephen Tucson, 
who's still with us uh, in uh, you know joining us via Zoom just to discuss uh, more on uh, the Matthew Lani story. Prof, thanks very much. As we conclude the conversation, I mean, how do we then safeguard the public? I mean, uh, we've been hearing quite a lot of people saying that look, uh, somehow, somehow. Uh, he was giving medical advices. Uh, he was saying that, look, these are the right diet pills. This, uh, this is what you need to do to deal with, uh, you know, prevention of some sort uh, in terms of this and that. But how do we then safeguard the public? And also, are we likely to see people coming forward, you know, to give testimony as, uh, you know, the state is trying to build this case? Sure. Step one, the prosecution needs to get a certificate or a witness from the health professions council to say he is not registered. But one of the practical difficulties here is I don't think anybody actually knows his real name. He's mm -hmm. been going through all these aliases and how do they check whether he's registered on the, on the role of doctors whether they, when they don't know what name to check for? So they have to take his fingerprints. They have to, they have to find out who he is then the House Prof Professions Council is going to have to say he is not registered with us, he is not a doctor, physio, or any of those things. Step one. Step two, did he uh, view his TikTok videos? Did he in any, at any time treat anybody, examine anybody, prescribe uh, medication, or, or give medical advice? And that would be an act which falls foul of the statute, and therefore it would be a contravention of the act. And then, as you said quite correctly, try and find members of the public to whom he did do those things. He treated them or gave them medical advice. And to, to the short answer to your question, how do we safeguard the public, is we need to make an example of someone like this by, uh, you can get up to five years direct imprisonment and or fine or both mm. for this kind of behavior. And it, I think there's an extreme of somebody who commits, who, who does abdominal surgery on someone who's not a doctor versus someone saying take these pills there's a, a spectrum of seriousness um i don't think he took he did any surgery or 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 you know but i, I do think that there should be a, a, a clear line drawn they should be he should be prosecuted and publicly punished so that people thinking about this would um think twice um, Prof, what do you make of, uh, you know, these uh, medical associations? I mean, we talk about the HPCSA, we talk about the South African Medical Association. Um, uh, particularly, let's focus on the HPCSA. Um, you know, the, the, there's been talk that, uh, look, the, the, they, they, they all talk most of the time. Uh, uh, you know, it feels like uh, they are not able, uh, they are not able to nip the issue uh, on the bud, particularly as you're looking at uh, uh, a lot of things that have been happening uh, at various health facilities. Now we're seeing people masquerading as uh, um, uh, uh, doctors uh, while they're not in the system. Uh, what do you make of statements such as the HPCSA being toothless, uh, you know, in yeah. enforcing these things and in trying to lay charges against those people? Sure. That's the very nature of the Health Professions Council job, is to regulate uh, medical practitioners of all kinds and to, and to ensure proper standards and to discipline people who fall short of those standards and to prosecute people who represent, misrepresent that they are doctors. Um, there was something in the media that says, no, unless the Health Professions Council actually makes a complaint the, the hands of the police are tied in the prosecution until they make a complaint. I would argue that they should have been very proactive and said, what? This is happening? Go straight to the nearest police station and lay a criminal charge. This guy's not a doctor and his name doesn't appear on our register. Nail him. But, you mm -hmm. know, there's this, they haven't done it yet. They have to be asked to do what, what their jobs are. Um, yeah, so... It's a misconception. They, they do not, there does not have to be a complainant here. The state can be the pro forma complainant and they can bring this charge against them without anybody actually laying a criminal charge at a police station. It helps. It's better. But the state can prosecute where a crime has been committed and they can subpoena the necessary witnesses and force them to come to court and testify. Mm. Just lastly, before I let you go, Prof, uh, I mean, 
such uh, you know events uh, such uh, stories might have uh, severe consequences also for the medical fraternity you know at large and its legitimacy uh, particularly looking at south africa has been you know when you look at the medical profession uh, we've been rated very high uh, globally also mm -hmm. but such stories some somehow might impede on uh, actually progress uh, within the medical fraternity, not only in the country, but in the African continent. And when you get to countries such as the US, they might say that, look, we're not sure if you are legitimate because your country is known to have people who, uh, you know, are masquerading as doctors. Mm. Mm. Yeah, look, to answer your question, I think that the members of the public need to be prudent. And if they're going to a new practitioner, they ought to at least be referred to them and have some kind of background check. You know, I, we, we go to our doctors who we've known for years and years and years and we have no doubt and we sometimes see their certificates on mm -hmm. the wall. You know, I think anybody who takes medical advice on TikTok is nuts. And, and you know, they, you know, who, who takes medical advice from some young person with a story that is so far-fetched, you know, well, you know, they're the author of their own misfortune, aren't they? Prof, thanks very much uh, for joining us. This was very insightful. I would like to have you back uh, sometime as soon as uh, uh, we're able to see progress in this case, but much appreciated uh, for your insight. Thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, I'm a good teacher and I can explain things well. I'm happy to talk to you on any criminal procedure or criminal cases. So I haven't been following Senzo my year, but you know, I could tell you about a trial within a trial and what goes on and what the law is and you know, that kind of stuff. Well, so feel free, but don't be late. Don't <laughs> be late. We'll definitely have you. Thank you very much, Prof, for joining us. That's uh, the Vets Law Clinic Sergeant Professor, uh, Professor Stephen uh, Tucson. They're just uh, helping us further understand the legality surrounding the Matthew Lani story. Uh, we hope that uh, we'll definitely uh, see how this unfolds as the NPA and the Hawks are, uh, you know, hot on the heels on this issue saying that uh, they are, uh, you know, their investigations are somewhere, somehow at an advanced level. We'll see how that uh, progresses as time goes on. That's how we wrap it up for today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you. So please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Simply send us an email. It's Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za. Alternatively, you can call or WhatsApp us at 081 531 88 Five, seven. From myself, Tabo Malukwani, and the rest of the team, Mas Chaba Kovale is up next with your primetime news. Good night and thank you for watching. <laughs>